You hear that immigrant children are dying at the border. You hear that Central Americans are dying at the border. But you don't hear that these are indigenous children dying at the border. At the U.S. southern border, people from Guatemala make up the largest portion of unaccompanied minors and family units apprehended. At least six known children have died in U.S. immigration custody. Five of those children are indigenous Mayas from Guatemala. And if we include adults, six Guatemalan Mayas total have died at the U.S. border. The news reports them as Guatemalans, but their specific Maya nations get buried in the coverage. Mam, Kekchi, Chu, Chorti, Achi. We spoke to Maya immigrants in the U.S. about the deaths of these young people at the border. In Komolveto, Tenam, Ishil. At Shitsahawik Shul Kunakil Mam. In Kimpe, Chef Kumpinamitu, Ichina. I'm from the Maya Mam Nation. Some of them asked us to protect their identity for fear of persecution of their families in Guatemala. Las muertes de estos niños en las fronteras. Lo único que nos está haciendo es visibilizando. In Guatemala, official statistics say the indigenous population is around 40%, but some think it could be as high as 60. Despite being a large portion of the population, indigenous peoples in Guatemala face high levels of inequality, land disputes, and displacement. Nosotros somos obligados a ir, a partir y a dejar lo que es nuestro, nuestra identidad, nuestro idioma. Somos un, una nación resistente aún. In May 2018, 20-year-old Claudia Patricia Gomez was shot in the head by Border Patrol agents. As I started hearing the news, I realized that she was from San Juan Ostuncalco, which is the village right next to where I was born and that she was actually from my nation. Then, reports of Maya children dying in U.S. custody started rolling in. A little girl, Jacqueline, had died in custody. And then, just two weeks later, we heard the news again, and Felipe died on Christmas Eve. Later, we had Juan. And then, we heard that a toddler had died, two and a half years old. His name was Wilmer. And not even two weeks later, another boy, 16-year-old, his name was Carlos. They died of things like bacterial infections, influenza, and pneumonia following ICE custody. Son niños inocentes que vienen a ofrecer su vida como un sacrificio, demostrando y gritando el sufrimiento que pasa en nuestra comunidad. One of the main challenges that indigenous migrants and refugees face at the border is the language barrier, both with English and Spanish. Aside from Spanish, there are 22 officially recognized indigenous languages in Guatemala. Muchas veces no hablamos el idioma español y nos encontramos con esa barrera al entrar a este país. Desconocemos lo que es el idioma inglés. We've asked for interpreters in their languages because you cannot have access to justice if you can't express yourself. And if they can't express themselves in their language, then they can't tell the complete story of what happened. Mam, Quiche, and Cancobal, Maya languages indigenous to Guatemala, are in the top 25 most common languages spoken in U.S. immigration court today. Despite this, there's often a shortage of interpreters of indigenous languages. And the language barrier can be deadly. Detained immigrants who speak an indigenous language are less likely to receive medical care. Seven-year-old Jacqueline Cal's father, Neri Gilberto Calcus, signed a form stating that she was in good health. The form was in English. Cal's first language was Maya Kekchi. Jacqueline Cal died of a bacterial infection. Indigenous Guatemalans also face high malnutrition rates. Malnutrition in Guatemala is 47%, with up to 70% in some indigenous areas. The Alta Vera Paz province, where Jacqueline Cal was from, has a 59% chronic malnutrition rate among children. Todas las tierras de mis ancestros han sido expropiadas por los grandes empresarios terratenientes que han ocupado las sagradas tierras. Palm oil plantations have been encroaching on indigenous land in rural Guatemala. So you look at the case, for instance, of Jacqueline Cal. The area that she came from is today heavily controlled by transnational corporations, by palm oil plantations, in 2018, 18 land defenders were murdered in Guatemala. Muchos de nuestros hermanos están también siendo perseguidos dentro del territorio 
por las grandes empresas extractivas que están llegando como una forma de monopolizar todos los recursos existentes. People from Guatemala started coming to the U.S. in big numbers fleeing war. In 1980, explotó más la guerra en mi país. There was mass accidents because of genocide that was occurring in our lands and territories. Guatemala experienced a 36-year civil war between 1960 and 1996. The United States under the Reagan administration poured hundreds of millions of dollars into the Guatemalan military. The Guatemalan military was responsible for 93% of the human rights abuses during the war. More than 200,000 of our people were killed or disappeared, and over 1.5 million were forcibly displaced. Most of them, most of us, were Maya people. In present-day Guatemala, indigenous people are leading the charge to prosecute war criminals from that era. Efrain Rios Mont, dictator of Guatemala from 1982 to 1983, was convicted of genocide and crimes against humanity in 2013. Rios Mont was charged for the massacre of 1,771 Maya Ishil people. However, his conviction was later overturned and he died at age 91. The oppression of Maya peoples in Guatemala didn't start with the Civil War. El genocidio empezó desde la llegada de los españoles. Tenemos 500 años de resistir en nuestro territorio por todas las injusticias. Los pueblos mayas somos pueblos que hemos existido y que hemos resistido ante diferentes tipos de invasiones. Es una larga noche que hemos tenido, es un largo caminar que tenemos de ser exiliados en nuestra propia tierra, de ser obligados a no hablar nuestro idioma de ser obligados a no usar nuestro traje que es, nos identifica. There's at least 1.3 million people of Guatemalan origin in the United States. However, it's unclear how many of those people are indigenous. We're inaccurately mislabeled as Latino or Hispanic or Latinx, but it's also caused a process of erasing our existence, erasing our identity. Though made invisible, Mayas are part of the fabric of U.S. immigrant communities. Es un reto, es un reto empezar de nuevo. Los mayas sí existimos aquí. What's happening to Mayas at the U.S. southern border is backed by centuries of oppression. The root drivers of forced migration for many of us has been because of our indigenous identity, because of the large-scale persecution we have lived. The International Mayan League has made demands of the U.S. government. Those include thorough and transparent investigations into the deaths on the border and a dialogue with indigenous leaders on developing humane immigration policies. Los gobiernos no son nuestros gobiernos. Son gobiernos de los ricos, de grandes empresarios, terratenientes, pero no hemos tenido nosotros una representación dentro de los gobiernos, sea aquí en Estados Unidos, sea en otro país, no hemos tenido un reconocimiento. Hey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you like the story about Mayas in Guatemala, check out our story about Palestinians in El Salvador.